Hello and welcome to Music Tech for Music Teachers. Today we're going to be talking about basic sound reinforcement. This one's really important. Let's jump right in. Okay, for our first episode, we're here talking about basic sound reinforcement, which basically means if you are playing somewhere and you want your sound to not just be what comes out of your instruments or what comes out of mouths or or even just what a like a guitar amplifier is going to make noise out into the room, you want to involve some amplification or a PA system for sound reinforcement. So some things we need to understand about sound reinforcement is what our goal is. We're trying to get sound from a predetermined source signal to be loud enough and clear enough for our intended audience. There are a few concepts and terms we'll need to be familiar with to provide effective sound reinforcement. We need to know signal levels and types and signal flows on a mixing board, which is typically what we'll be using for this sound reinforcement. So if we're looking at signal levels, we are talking about how strong a signal can be. A signal is generated um, and, and by a natural acoustic phenomenon, let's say a voice singing, right? We have to convert that into signal using a microphone or a pickup, but that signal that we generate is going to come in at a certain level. The lowest signal level is actually the signal that's generated by a microphone. Um, you know that this is a really low level because if you plug a microphone into a speaker without anything else in between, just straight into, I'm not talking about plugging into a, a speaker that turns on or an active speaker, we'll talk about that in a second, but if you wired a microphone directly to the cone um, magnet and coil of a speaker, you would generate no sound because it'd be too weak, you wouldn't notice anything happening. Uh, it's also what would come in from a direct box, uh, which is something you would use to plug an electric instrument uh, directly into your PA console. Um, and they're going to require a preamp to be brought to what we call line level. Instrument level is just a little bit stronger than mic level, um, but effectively it's the same as microphone level. Um, and it's going to require that uh, you come directly out of a guitar or a bass, some keyboards and synthesizers will be instrument level, but honestly, typically they will be at line level already. Okay, so if your source is at mic or instrument level, the first place that that signal needs to go is a preamp. Um, standalone preamps exist in the recording world, uh, but for live sound, your preamp is usually just going to live um, on your mixing console. Uh, whether that be like a board or what we're looking at right here is a powered mixer. Uh, the preamp knob will usually be labeled gain or trim and is typically the closest knob to your input jack. As you turn up the preamp knob, you are adding what we call more gain, which uh, it's, a, it's a bit of circuitry that increases the level of your signal. So let's say your level uh, is, is at minus 64 dB. That's a real quiet sound. As you turn that gain knob up, the sound that you're making isn't getting louder, but your level will now be at minus 18 dB, which is much louder. Um, zero dB being the, the strongest level we have. Anytime you surpass zero dB in the digital world, you just get distortion. So you want to stay below zero. Okay, so um, if we have something at micro-instrument level, we want to bring that up to line level. Now, we may be dealing sometimes with things that are already line level. Um, a lot of keyboards, um, anything that comes out of a preamp, uh, and a lot of personal electronics are already at line level. Um, signal at line level is ready to be amplified, and it will need to pass through an amplifier, though, to be brought out to speaker level. So there's two different amounts of line level. The first one is minus 10 dB, and that's the level that comes out of your headphone port on like a, a CD player or an MP3 player. So it's powerful enough to drive the tiny, tiny speakers and drivers that are inside of headphones, but it's not powerful enough to drive like an out loud speaker. Even if, you know, if you turn your headphones all the way up and you don't put them in your ears, you can still kind of hear it, 
But if you were to have it at that same level and plug it into a big speaker, you actually wouldn't be able to hear it at all because it's just not enough to drive a speaker. Next is professional line level. And in the analog world, you can go above zero. Um, and this isn't super important, but professional line level is just, it's going to be louder than consumer line level. So it's what's going to come out of mixers, preamps, and signal processors. Sometimes keyboards um, and synthesizers will, will be at that level as well. And basically, once you're at line level, you need to go through an amplifier to get to speaker level. And that is, that's how you do get loud enough to drive a speaker. Um, we see here that I have a, that's a, it's a crown amplifier and it is plugged into a passive speaker. You also want to take a second and, and we're going to talk about mono and stereo signal. So mono signal can be transmitted via a, a single unbalanced or balanced cable and it will have the same sounds coming out of the left and right speakers. Stereo audio signal um, can be transmitted via a single balanced or two unbalanced or balanced cables. Um, basically, it means that there's, there's two different signals that are actually being handled um, to be delivered to left and right ears separately. They will have different sounds coming out of left and right speakers. When you're looking at a mixing board, you want to make sure that if you're plugging into a stereo channel with a mono source, that mono source is only going to come out of one of those speakers unless you double it and go into the right side as well. Stereo channels are usually given two numbers, so it'll be labeled like 910 or 1112, or we see on this mixing board that we're looking at, 78. They'll usually accept a single balanced TRS cable or two unbalanced TS cables. Uh, a TS and TRS cables, if you look at the plug on an instrument cable, um, there'll be these little black lines, or sometimes there'll be other colors, but these lines that, that run across to separate the tip of the cable from the rest of the cable. If there's just one line, you have a TS cable, you have tip and sleeve. If you have two lines, you have a TRS cable, which is tip, ring, sleeve. Um, the tip, tip ring sleeve can contain, you know, the tip will deliver the left, the ring will deliver the right, and the sleeve will deliver the ground, which we use to help keep our cables quiet. Um, or if it's a balanced cable, tip will carry signal, right, uh, ring will carry signal out of phase to help fight interference, and then the sleeve is still ground. Um, then we have mono channels, and they will have one number. A mono channel will only have one number. It'll usually accept balanced XLR cables or unbalanced TS cables. If you're using a TS cable, you want to make sure you plug into an input and not an insert. Someday, I would love to talk about inputs versus inserts, but for today, we're just going to talk about the fact that if you're plugging into something, you want to plug into an input. Signal flow. I've created this nice little diagram here to show you where the sound goes in a mixing board. So the signal is coming from the microphone into the input on a channel strip where it's combined. Uh, it moves through all of the processes vertically down the board. Then it's going to get combined um, with all of the other channels and directed to an output. We call that output or where those master faders are there on the right an output bus. Um, and it, it, a bus contains lots of sources. Um, now, from our outputs, we're going to get line-level signal because most mixers have line-level signal coming out of them, which means that before we can plug into a speaker, we'll need to go into an amplifier. There are a million different ways that channel strips look, so we're just going to use this Mackie one as our, as our example here. When you're looking at a channel strip, you get control over aspects of the signal going through it. You have your input, XLR, or quarter inch. Um, you want to double check. Sometimes they'll be expecting line uh, level or they'll be expecting um, instrument level or mic level. So double check that you're doing that correctly. Low cut, uh, you might have a switch. This is called a high pass filter. 
and it's going to remove some low frequencies. Um, a lot of times when you're combining a lot of sound sources together and a lot of them have a lot of low frequencies in them, you can start to you create a situation in which those sources have to fight each other for sonic space. So a lot of times, unless you're using an instrument that really needs those low frequencies, you'll want to go ahead and, and have that button engaged. Then you have preamp gain. That's going to set the signal level of a source. Um, that's what we talked about, bringing it up to line level. It's always going to get to line level through the preamp, but if you turn it up too high, you're going to get distortion. If you don't turn it up light enough, you're going to get line level, but you're still going to be quiet. Um, you want to set it as high as possible without creating distortion or feedback. Um, auxiliary mixes, we will talk about those more at another time, but basically sometimes mixing boards will have more buses than just your master output. They'll have a separate one so that if you wanted to create a different mix of all the same instruments, you could do so. Um, a lot of mixing boards have parametric equalizers. Um, and they basically allow you to adjust the loudness of different frequency ranges. So if you wanted to turn up just the high end part of the, free, of the signal, you could do that. If you wanted to turn up just the low end part of a signal, you could do that. Um, pan will move the signal in stereo space. So as you turn a pan knob to the left, that sound is going to come completely out of the left speaker once it's all, all the way over. Then as you scroll it across to the right, it's going to move from just the left speaker until the right speaker is getting a little bit louder, a little bit at a time, until eventually we end up that we're fully on the right speaker. Um, that, helps you, that can help you place things in space. Most of the time for live sound reinforcement, you don't need to do a ton of panning because you want everybody to hear everything. But it's important to know what that does in case you think one of your speakers is broken and it turns out the thing you're trying to amplify is actually just panned to one of the speakers. All right. Uh, mute is an important button. <laughs> one of the first things you want to check if something's not working. Uh, if a microphone starts feeding back, you want to mute it to kill that feedback immediately. Solo will let you it's basically the opposite of mute. Instead of turning just that channel off, it turns all of the other channels off. Not every uh, board is going to have a solo button. Um, and sometimes they'll have what they call a rude solo light that will flash if, uh, if any channel is soloed. So if something's going wrong, that light will be flashing, letting you know, hey, you have something in solo. That might be your problem. Now your fader, and they're not always faders. Sometimes they're knobs, um, but you they'll still you still kind of want to refer to it as the fader of the channel is the last step in a channel strip. And it basically determines how much of that signal that you've amplified, EQ'd, sent to auxiliary mixes and panned, how much of it you want to send to your master output. Um, so you usually want to want to start with it at the bottom and then just turn that up until you have enough sound um, not to be excessive. Okay, and then the master bus, that's where all of these now line level signals are being combined together. And they work like a, like a volume knob on, on your entire system. Um, it sums everything together so that they all come out of one or two outputs. Um, some boards will have separate faders for left and right, but you'll typically just want to keep them together because if you've mixed correctly, then you'll turn them both up and down at the same time, and your balance will be where you want it. But we're not done here, because our mixers only output line-level signal, which means we can't... That's not enough to go out of any speakers, so we've mixed all these signals together, and that's great, but they're not loud enough yet. So before you can hear the signal from your main mix or any of your auxiliary mixes, uh, that signal is going to have to pass through an amplifier to be brought to speaker level. Um, locating the amplifier can be a difficult thing because people like it in different places. They make powered mixers, and that's what we call them. Basically, that's a mixer that instead of outputting line level signal, it has the amplifier built into it, so it actually outputs speaker level signal. Um, it's a convenient way to do an all-in-one thing. It will make your mixer really heavy, 
And if something goes wrong with your amplifier, it's a lot harder to fix because the electronics in there are a lot more complicated. Um, they also make amplifiers in standalone units, like that crown unit right here on the on the screen. That basically you would plug your mixer into that, and then you have cables coming out of that that would go into your speakers. Now they also make speakers that have amplifiers built in, so you can come straight out of your mixer into a speaker. If the speaker needs to be plugged in, then it has an amplifier in it. You do not want to send speaker level signal into an active speaker. And an active speaker is one that has an amplifier in it. If your sound has already been amplified, you do not want to put that sound into an amplifier because an amplifier is only expecting line level signal. So the big lesson here is to know what signal level each one of your devices is expecting and give it just that. So in our powered mixer scenario, we have two of these yellow speaker cables coming out of the back of our mixer and going into the back of our passive speakers. Passive speakers, all they're going to have is just an input, and they may have an output as well if you want to chain multiple speakers together. And that's all you're going to deal with. Um, these are the ones I see most often in like school music programs because they are so compact and easy to use, uh, but they're also really easy to misuse if you try to hook them up to active speakers. That's why I made that strong disclaimer there that you want to make sure everything matches. In a standalone amplifier unit scenario, um, you're coming out of your mixer, out of that master bus, into the amplifier, and then the amplifier will plug into those passive speakers. Um, notice that the ins you can use an instrument or microphone cable to carry that line level signal, but when you're carrying speaker level signal to the speakers, you want to make sure you're specifically using a speaker cable. If you use an instrument cable like you would use to plug in a guitar or a keyboard, you may end up damaging the cable, you may end up damaging the equipment, because those cables are not designed to handle such high signal levels. Then we have our active speaker scenario. Each speaker will need to be plugged in to electricity wherever it is. However, you will not need to have um, a mixer that has an amplifier built in, and you will not need to have a standalone amplifier unit in between. You can just run instrument or microphone cables from the output of your mixing board into the inputs of your active speakers. So to review here, we want to use the right cables with the right connectors. You want to know your signal level and whether it's mono or stereo so that you can get your sound amplified everywhere. You want to know the signal flow. You really need to know where your sound is going once it enters the mixer. You need to know everything it goes through to make sure that it's going out that master bus. Some mixing boards will require that you press a button to send it to the master bus because you may be working with something like a click track on one of your channels that you don't want to go to the audience. Maybe you're only trying to send it to an auxiliary mix that has like the drummer's headphones on um, and you're, you don't want your audience to hear your metronome track. So you need to know where your sound is going. Um, you need to know if your amplifier is in your mixer, if it's a standalone unit, or if it's in your speakers, and use only proper speaker cables when transmitting speaker level signal. Thank you for joining us for Music Tech for Music Teachers. I hope you learned something being able to put together your own PA system for live sound amplification, and even maybe understanding it better can help you troubleshoot when things go wrong. Feel free to leave a comment or subscribe. Uh, to learn more and ask questions if you have them. Thank you.